Hey there guys, Ian here and today I'm bringing you a little tutorial about how to bring in Cinema 4D scenes into After Effects. Um, so the first thing you actually need to do uh, to get this to work is to actually put an exchange plugin into After Effects. Uh, you can find that in your applications or on a PC and program files if you go down to Maxon and then go into your version of Cinema 4D and you should have a folder called Exchange Plugins and in there we have one called After Effects and depending if you're on um, a Mac or Windows you need to go into the respective folder so I'm using uh, Mac but you can see both of them are pretty much the same um, if you're using CS6 in After Effects then use the CS5 or .5 um, otherwise go into whichever folder you're using and you should have this zip file which if you unzip you'll get a plugin so what you need to do is copy that um, I've already done this but you need to put it into your Adobe file and so just go to where you've got your folder for After Effects go into the plugins folder and paste it in here as you can see I've got it just here and after you've done that you are ready to go so the next step is to jump into Cinema 4D here and I'm going to show you how to do this with lights so um, you don't need to change any of this but I'm just going to uh, make it widescreen um, also going to make it so it actually renders all 90 frames as there's going to be a bit of movement with the camera so what I'm going to show you is how you can um, export all your lights into uh, After Effects. So I'm going to insert a light in here and then go to MoGraph, Cloner and just drag the light on. Now I'm going to change the mode to a grid array and just um, change this and so it's more like this just so we have a few more lights and it's a bit rectangular um, it doesn't matter um, if you have some lights then this will work and then what you want to do is press C on the cloner or um, the button over here to make it editable and that way you'll get each individual light as After Effects doesn't work with cloner only kind of physical objects and next we're just going to put in a target light and I'm just going to make a keyframe at 0 here and then another keyframe at 90 just here just so Ooh. my bad just so the camera kind of swoops around just like that uh, so that's fine the next thing we want to do is go to our render settings just make sure your frame range is to all frames and go to save and we're just going to make a save file here so I'm just going to call this tutorial if I could spell and next we want to go to compositing file uh, save include timeline marker and include 3d data and then we're just going to um, click render uh, this will go through incredibly fast as there's nothing actually to show as the lights aren't visible at all uh, but that's fine so it just takes 10 seconds here and if we go into our folder, I save it to the desktop um, we have all these I was meant to save it as a movie file but this works just as well and so now that you've done that just jump into After Effects and import what you just did. Uh, just import the AEC file. And in here we have our um, composition and our image. So if we double click on the composition, you can see here that the image is on the bottom layer. And so if you had actually anything in your scene, it would appear here. And all your lights are here and if we scroll through you can see our camera moves with it which is great that's exactly what we want so the next thing what we're going to do is 
create a new solid. Uh, just keep it as black. And I'm going to change the mode to add. Then what you can do with here is if you have optical flares, you could drag it onto this. And so we have a flare going around here. Then we change the source type to 3D. It will actually move with our 3D camera. Or what we can do is change it to track lights. And if we turn the scale down a bit, we actually have all of our lights being tracked. Which is pretty cool. And um, they're all 3D as well. And what you can even do um, is actually grab the lights and you can actually move them around a bit. So if you wanted a light more over here, uh, you could. Or you can actually use a virtual camera to actually move around your scene or even zoom in. So it's quite cool. Um, it even works with a plugin called Plexus, if you have that as well. If I search for that, I uh, just drag that on, add effect to light, and if we just change the maximum distance up a bit, you can see we have all of our objects connected, and we can zoom in and see that all, which is pretty cool. And so you can see it's really powerful. Um, you can do whatever you like. Uh, they don't have to be in a grid formation. You could have. Uh, you don't even have to use a cloner object to do it. You could just insert as many lights as you wanted. Or um, if you had um, a logo, you could use a cloner object to clone lights around it, and then you could track it. So if you ever um, had a light on your logo which you wanted the flare to follow and you didn't want to keyframe every single step of the way uh, you can do it that way. I use this in my most recent project which is going up very soon as long as I get the clear from the uh, client just to upload it when he's happy. Um, it saved me hours and hours because there's like 70 lights in it or so and um, every single one of them was meant to have a flare and so rather than having to track each one myself, I could just export the lights like this. And so I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. It's quite a short one, um, but the possibilities are endless with this. So I hope you get some good use out of it. And if you do use it, feel free to put it as a video response and I'll check it out. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.